I have to put the speaker on real quick. Sorry about that, guys. That should be a little bit better. I don't know if you can see the view I've got behind. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the view I got behind me, but it's pretty spectacular. Um, this is the Salt Lake Valley that you're looking at. All the pollution and everything. We'll do it here. Hopefully the, the audio is coming through fine. I don't really know if it will or not, but we can hope. All right, so I'm gonna do a essay out of the uh, Satanic Scriptures today called Apocalypse Now. This is by Megas Peter H. Gilmore. It's a pretty damn good little essay. So let's go ahead and move forward and I'll read it and then we'll uh, discuss it just a little bit here. I'm up here with my family so I can't spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, and it's a little bit chilly if I'm being honest. Mini girl. All right, here we go. Apocalypse Now. In 1990, I spent some time with the media taping a two-hour version of Christina in Los Angeles and chatting on the airwaves with Denver evangel uh, evangelist, <laughs> evangelist Bob Larson. Magistrate Blanche Barton did the show the prior day. One particular point presented itself to me in crystal clarity, the fact that we are truly in the end times, though things are not going according to white light prophecy. Christianity, now in its last gasp, is like a star about to end its existence, swollen with the consumption of fuel that has kept it going. No longer the arbiter of Western thinking, it has been replaced by the new god, television, which holds most of the herd in the thrall of its hypnotic single eye. Today's true believers are video drones. As the new millennium draws near, we see about us the signs of a world teetering on the brink of vast changes. The older order has become a chaos of factions and fanaticism, no longer capable of meeting the demands of a globe festering with more humans than can be comfortable supported. Many of whom are simply parasites, fattening on the blood of the producers and achievers. The earth is subject to natural laws, and the rule of nature is both just and harsh. The beast is awakening, throwing off 2,000 years of slumber to once again clear the dross and reestablish the rule of fang and claw. Fenris's chains have been shattered, and his jaws shall crush the feeble crucifix to splinters. The Christian hysteria at their continuing loss of power has in the past decade fastened on Satanism as a scapegoat, bringing a remarkable return to the same tactics used in the late 1400s with the publication of the Malleus Maleficarum. Official statements create a popular picture of evil. Satanists, who are depicted as reversed Christians, involved with worshipping the devil, committing sacrifices, human or other, and promoting the use of drugs to enslave people to their cause. But things have changed since the dim and blood-drenched times. Satanists now exist for real, and we talk back. The Church of Satan demonstrates a rational philosophy consistent with man's nature, making Satanists truly dangerous to those who would enslave one with guilt for following his natural inclinations. We have exposed the so-called Prince of Peace as the agent of decay. Through his championing of the weak and the expense of the strong, the pendulum is now swinging at the opposite, I'm, I'm sorry, at the opposite direction. Ragnarok is witnessing an influx of extreme extremism to work towards the reestablishment of meritocracy. Satanists are the accusers, not passive straw men used to frighten the stray sheep back to the fold. The bloated star of Christianity is about to implode, forming a black hole of vileness, sucking down into its depths the human refuse that has held back the evolution of our species. As James Blish said in his novel Black Easter regarding biblical prophecy, each of the opposing sides in any war always predicts victory. They cannot both be right. It is the final battle that counts, not the propaganda. The rules of the earth are on our side. We are already the victors, for they and their God are dead. That's the essay. Uh, this is a great sort of treatise to the end of uh, the... Uh, hold on, give me one second. I'm going to call my dog. Is Minnie with you? Um, 
the end of the satanic panic. I think it's a wonderful sort of um, cherry on the top of really Satanists and Satanism um, being uh, validated and justified legally, but also in popular culture. Uh, I do think, you know, um, I had a show with uh, Patrick DeMarco and Enlightened Pers or uh, an Enlightened Perspective or something like that, uh, episode four, where we had talked about the uh, satanic ease or unease as uh, defined by Megas Gilmore in one of his essays. And though I don't see a resurgence in a collective that would cause another satanic panic, to Megas Gilmore's point, there does seem to be an unease that is coming back. And as these do tend to come in waves, we just need to be aware, be conscious of the fact that we could easily return to another situation where um, we are seen as the outsiders uh, and even, you know, demonized. I mean, we're in a position right now where um, a Supreme Court is stacked with one political side. Uh, you have a House of Congress stacked with one political side. You have an administration with one political side. And the primary supporters of this administration is evangelists. And if evangelicals are, just, I don't know why I said it that way before, if evangelicals get an itchy hair up their ass about really shutting down um, other religions, this is the administration that they could actually move it with. He, you know, this administration knows that it does not have political clout with any group, other, any group of power, I should say, other than evangelicals. And so he caters to them. You know, that's why he chose Kavanaugh as a Supreme nominee, uh, Supreme Court nominee, and now um, approved justice. I mean, he, this administration stripped a press pass of a CNN reporter recently until a judge forced him to give it back. And then they're putting up together new rules so that they can remove the pass again and remove it from other reporters that don't speak in their tone. We're not too far from it, it moving from the media to religion. And though we are in a point in time where it is the most comfortable for us Satanists, uh, we have to be mindful of past orthodoxies and be aware that it doesn't take much to lose every bit of freedoms that we currently have in Western civilization. And to the point of this uh, wonderful essay that Megas Gilmore wrote, um, we are in a time where Christianity as it existed, certainly back in the 1400s, but just as it is today, um, is much more of a family issue than a cultural issue everywhere else in the world, except for, um, you know, like central, uh, I'm sorry, except for mainly Southern America, U.S., uh, the South, but just U.S. in general. I did find it very interesting, the, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to get the exact name here, the Malleus Maleficarum, in the research for this, because I've never actually read that book, um, it was the second most popular book for 200 years. And the first most popular, of course, is the Bible, because the reality is, is these are the only two printed in mass uh, dissemination because of the church, because they're the only ones that could afford to print manuscripts like this. So I always thought that was interesting that the, and if you don't know, the, um, um, I always forget the damn name, the Malleus Maleficarum was a, a sort of instruction manual on how to punish sinners. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like those who supposedly practice witchcraft and such. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, so I don't know, you know, in terms of apocalypse now, I think you can make an argument for the end time of Christianity having existed earlier in the 90s, because it certainly looked that way. Uh, I think it's years to come, and I don't know that it ever will fully go the way of the dodo. It'll return, I think, to its cult roots, like it sprung in, you know, Roman times. Uh, you know, 
return to the ashes from whence it came, I think, is how we should look at Christianity. Because ultimately, I don't care if it exists, and it's not the religion itself that is the cause of strife for me personally, though there's a lot of wickedness inherent within it. Like, true human objectionable wickedness. Um, which is ironic. But, um, you know, th there are some Christians that I call friends and family, and they're not, you know, those vile humans that you see in the news, like the Catholic priests raping children. Um, and so, because they're not all like that, and some people do use it for their own version of what they consider good, um, that's why I don't think it'll ever fully go away, and I'm fine with that. It's as long as these religions don't continue to attempt to uh, exert their influence on us or on others that is at the heart of, uh, well, the only way that we'll ever get along. And that is the best case scenario, in my opinion, of seeing an apocalypse in the terms of Christianity. So. Uh, that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, in your interest in let me know in the comments or on Patreon how you guys, you know, feel about that essay. Is there uh, an apocalypse? Has it already happened? And we just didn't notice it. Uh, <laughs> have Christians not noticed it? Uh, or we, could we ever truly return to a satanic panic era of losing our footing as a rational society? And you can always make an argument that we haven't actually <laughs> moved from that now, but... Um, so yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much. Hail Satan.